Okay, hi there and welcome to a special video for Microeconomics which is going to take you through some great applied examples. These are the kind of examples that can make a big positive difference to your exam script in 2019. So here we go, here's some examples to think about. Let's think about some big employers first of all, the largest employers in the world. These are the employers, the businesses that employ tens, hundreds of thousands of people. This chart shows the world's biggest companies based on employees in 2017. Top of the list is Walmart, nearly two and a half million people employed by Walmart and just under one and a half million employed by China Petroleum, uh, just under a million employed by China Post. These are the big employers. Notice there that Amazon now employs well over 500,000 people. What about the biggest companies in the world by market value in terms of the market capitalization of the shares? That's the share price multiplied by the uh, number of shares issued. As of 2018, the biggest three companies in the world are Amazon, Apple and Google, otherwise known as Alphabet. And here's this table ranking the countries ranked 1 to 18 in terms of their market value. Apple had a market valuation of just under a trillion dollars. Some big, big companies in there, including some of the big oil companies and some of the big investment banks. What about public sector businesses? Always good to have some examples of those to hand. The public sector includes any organisation that's owned and controlled by central or local government. So good examples include the Royal Bank of Scotland, BBC and Network Rail, which uh, runs the train network in the UK. Public sector also includes the NHS state schools, the police, the armed forces and the civil service. In fact, the NHS in the UK employs 30% of all public sector staff. Social enterprises have grown in importance for the British economy in recent years. So a social enterprise is a business created to make a profit, but to address a social problem. Profits are reinvested for one or more social purposes in the wider community, rather than the need just to satisfy private investors. And two really good examples are Divine Chocolate, the fair trade social enterprise chocolate company, and the Eden Project in Cornwall. What about cooperatives, employee owned businesses? So cooperatives are businesses that are owned and run by and for their members. So whether the members are the customers, the employees or the residents, they have an equal say in what the business does and they also have a share in the profits. The largest cooperatives in the UK measured by turnover are the John Lewis Partnership, you probably know that well in the retail sector, the Co-op Group, and also Isle of Foods UK, which is a cooperative of dairy producers. Let's move on to different types of business growth. Organic business growth is also known as internal growth, and that comes from the expansion from within a business. For example, by increasing, expanding the product range or the number of business units and locations. For most businesses, actually, organic is the only expansion method used. And two great examples, well known hopefully, are Under Armour, the sports retail business, and also Lego, which has some claim to be the world's biggest construction company as well. So that's organic growth. Conglomerate businesses. Good to have an example or two here. A conglomerate is a business with several significant business activities but in very diverse markets. And the three examples I've chosen for you are 3M, Siemens from Germany and General Electric. Indeed, this chart shows us the world's biggest conglomerates as of May 2018 based on, again, the market value of those companies. Those were the three biggest. It could also include Philips from uh, um, from Holland and Honeywell International from the United States. Big, diversified companies are known as conglomerates. Good to have some examples. A lot of interest in the media in unicorn businesses. Unicorns are basically privately held startup companies with a current valuation of more than a billion US dollars. The term was actually coined about five or six years ago by the venture capitalist Aileen Lee and uh, she chose the mythical animal the unicorn to if you like represent the statistical rarity of startups reaching a billion dollar valuation 
on into TechCrunch, there were over 300 unicorns as of March 2018. I've chosen Airbnb, the air, the, the hotel um, residential booking app, and Zhou Labs, which is an e-cigarette startup, which is becoming very, very popular. These are the startup companies valued at more than $1 billion or more by venture capital firms worldwide as of this month, April 2019. Uber is now valued at $72 billion. Uh, WeWork, the workspace company, Airbnb there, SpaceX, Epic Games, lots of uh, really interesting startup businesses, including Pinterest. Those are the biggest unicorn examples that I can find. Also important to understand the idea of joint ventures. <clears throat> Although there is a, a tendency to merge and acquire, a lot of businesses decide not to do that. They decide to go down the joint venture uh, pathway. And a joint venture is when uh, two or more businesses join together to pursue a common project. So they basically the businesses remain separate in legal terms, but oftentimes they join together because they want to benefit from perhaps some collaborative work. Maybe they've got a mutually agreed strategic tar target. Or maybe they want to share the fixed costs of big research projects. My two examples for you are Google and NASA, which of course came together as a joint venture to create Google Earth. And the big joint venture in the motor sector, the oligopolistic motor industry, a joint venture between Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi. Uh, a couple of other, other examples of recent mega mergers and acquisitions. It's always good just to have a couple of examples in your locker, in your revision notes to bring to an essay. I've chosen Disney, which made a, a takeover of 20th, 20th Century Fox. That was a big deal. That was over $70 billion. And a huge, very surprising but interesting merger and takeover in the food sector, uh, Amazon. Uh, spent $13.7 billion acquiring the grocery chain Whole Foods. Really, really interesting example. Uh, we've talked about mergers, talked about takeovers. Let's talk about demergers. Demergers becoming again popular, more frequent as companies look to avoid diseconomies of scale and, and focus on their core competences, if you like. So a demerger is the hiving off or the selling off of one or more business units from a group so that they then operate as independently managed businesses. My two examples are Sports Direct, which has been acquiring businesses recently, uh, but which sold the Dunlop brand, and eBay demerged from PayPal. Really good example in the global payment sector. Horizontal integration, favourite question amongst examiners, uh, the costs and benefits of horizontal integration. So when the two businesses operating in the same industry, the same stage of production, the same stage of the supply chain come together. The big story at the moment in the UK is the proposed merger between Asda and Sainsbury's in the retail sector, which would in theory create Britain's biggest food retailer. The Competition Commission are investigating that at the moment. It's worth keeping an eye, out, uh, an eye on. Lots, loads of mergers in the betting industry. <clears throat> I mean, tens of them. The industry has consolidated over the last 10 years. In 2016, for example, Ladbrokes merged with Gala Cole, the online bookmaker. A challenger brands. Very, very good to use this concept when discussing contestable markets. A challenger brand, hard to define, but it's basically a, a new business, an emerging brand uh, that comes into an industry. It's not the market leader. It's not a niche brand, but it, it seeks to disrupt the status quo. It seeks to challenge the market power of the existing firms. That's what I would understand by a challenger brand. And the three examples I've chosen for you here are Metrobank, which along with Monzo and others are trying to challenge the oligopolistic power of the banks. Aldi and Lidl, of course, making big strides in taking market share from the established food grocers. And Norwegian Airlines has made uh, quite a dent, quite an impact in the transatlantic uh, aviation industry. Really good to use the concept of challenger brands. Uh, a quick word on transport. For those transport geeks out there, it's important to understand the economics of the rail industry. 
should it be nationalised, for example? And of course, we make a distinction between network rail, which is uh, a public sector business which manages the train network and train operating companies, mostly privately owned. They run franchises for profit. Good examples, the much, much criticised Southeast Trains, First Great Western and Virgin Stagecoach. That's the joint venture running the West Coast Line in the UK. So train operating companies are running train franchises and they bid for those. LNER is state-owned and now runs the East Coast Line. How about some examples for monopolistic competition? A form of imperfect competition can be found in loads of markets ranging from sandwich bars to fast food shops, coffee stores, pizza delivery companies. I've chosen the restaurant sector, which I think is a great example of monopoly competition. Wagamama will be a good example there. Five Guys, etc. And of course, Nando's. Uh, and the hairdressing sector. So typically in the city centre, you've got lots of small independent hair, uh, hairdressing businesses, often uh, owner-managed. And you've got a range of chain businesses, including supercuts. Good examples, though, of monopolistic competition. What about oligopoly? Oligopoly, of course, favourite market structure for exams. is an industry dominated by a few producers. Typically, 60% uh, or more of the industry is held by the top five firms. So it's a market where there's a lot of a high level of market concentration. Petrol retailing is good, soft drinks producers, high street banks, global market for footwear, um, sports footwear. My two examples are the mobile phone service providers, uh, Vodafone being a good example, competing with BT, for example. And the cinema industry in the UK is also oligopolistic. View, Odeon, Cineworld are the big three cinema providers. Duopoly, of course, is a form of oligopoly. In its purest form, two firms control all the market. But in reality, the term duopoly describes any, any sector where two firms dominate. Loads of good examples, Coca-Cola and Pepsi in the soft drink sector. Uh, and um, in the airline industry, Airbus and Boeing are two of the two dominant aircraft manufacturers. They're not the only manufacturers of aircraft, but they, they currently dominate the market. IPOs, an IPO is an initial public offering, quite important when you're thinking about how businesses grow. At some point, businesses may decide to go to the stock market and seek a listing of their shares to raise new capital, to raise equity. And my, my two chosen examples of the IPOs, the big ones, are SoftBank and Alibaba. SoftBank is based in Tokyo. It's a telecommunications company. It's got a big hand in many of the leading startups in the world. Alibaba will hopefully be known to you. It's China's and by some measures the world's biggest online commerce company. Uh, their, their three main sites, including Alibaba, have hundreds of millions of users. And in fact, they handle more business than any e-commerce company. Alibaba set up by Jack Ma. And these are the largest IPOs worldwide as of the start of 2019. So when Alibaba went to market, it raised over 21 billion US dollars. That was the size of the deal. SoftBank just a, a smidgen behind. Facebook floated in 2012 and raised over 16 billion dollars. And loads of others, including Deutsche Telekom, raising 13 billion. So these were the biggest initial public offerings or are currently in the world. Uh, monopsony, really important, really important to think about monopsony employers, particularly if you're studying the labour market as part of your economics. A monopsony occurs in the labour market when there's a sole or a dominant employer in the labour market. And this means that the employer has buying power when hiring potential employees. My two examples would be Uber, the taxi app, which is operating in hundreds of different cities around the world and Deliveroo, of course, which is the uh, the food delivery service. Big issues to do with Mopsney, well worth having a couple of good examples there. Uh, yep, that's those 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 large companies based in the prominent again, Walmart and China Petroleum. I think we've had that slide before. Anyway, there we go. There are some of the micro examples 
that I would choose if I was adding some good contextual examples to my economics provision notes. Hopefully you found that useful. I'll be doing a great applied macro examples video and you can check that out on the YouTube channel, YouTube channel pretty soon.